Welcome to The Faithful Steward. This is a podcast all about sharing biblical wisdom and practical insights in order to help church leaders pursue and teach financial freedom as part of Christian discipleship. We believe this is a spiritual conversation and this is a place where the church needs to lead the way in order to move our communities forward in how we steward God's resources. I'm your host, James Lenhoff, and I am so passionate about this conversation and helping leaders have the confidence to step into it. We believe that if we help people thrive financially and grow spiritually, it changes everything. And I am so excited to join you on this journey. This podcast is brought to you by GoodSense. If you'd like more information about what we're up to, you can go to our website at goodsensemovement.org. All right, let's get started with today's conversation. Today, we're going to talk about a problem that you might not think is a problem. We're going to talk about underspending. Now, look, we talk about overspending all the time, and all of us can recognize that as a problem. Spending beyond your means, uh, racking up credit card debt, Spending money you don't have to buy things today that you can't really afford to continue to pay for, those are all really big problems, and they're pretty glaring problems. People know when they have an overspending problem, but there is another side to that coin. And a lot of times, the solution to the overspending problem can actually overcorrect and become an underspending problem. Underspending is where we are hoarding, we are uh, restricting, we are telling ourselves no all the time and celebrating our willpower, celebrating our restrictiveness, telling ourselves we're succeeding because we're doing none of the things we actually want to do. Overspending is allowing ourselves to do anything and everything we want to do, even if it's really not doable. Underspending results in us getting a sense of security and identity in the money that we're keeping because we're not doing things that we actually do want to do and can afford to do. We end up in these situations where we're actually high-fiving ourselves more often than not and telling ourselves we're doing a good job because we're not enjoying anything. We're not eating out. We're not spending any money on vacations. We're not really uh, taking part in any hobbies. We're not giving money generously to others. We're just keeping all of it to ourselves. And it does feed this sense of strength and self-sufficiency. And I know this is a really strange topic, but it's one that I think uh, I see quite often in the church, that we end up in this situation where it's almost like a competition sometimes to see who can spend the least, who can drive the ugliest, most broken down car, who can live in the smallest, most modest house. There's plenty of the opposite of that competition out there as well, to be clear. The keeping up with the Joneses side of the overspending is much more evident and clearly all over the place. But there's this hidden kind of secret competition where we're hiding our enjoyment We're not actually telling anybody about the things we really delight in or the stuff we like to do, because if we're spending money on those those things, it always means that we're being selfish. And so we end up competing with ourselves and sometimes even with others to be the most frugal and ultimately a lot of times the most miserable You know, who is spending the least and who is doing the least because that is somehow a badge of honor. That's not how this works. Our God is a God of abundance. Our God is a God who delights and expects us to enjoy. He wants us to enjoy the things that he has created that are for our delight. In fact, in the Old Testament, he commands the Israelites to celebrate to have festivals, to party, to delight and rest. These are demands. These are expectations. They are commanded by God that we would experience the beauty and the fullness of the pleasure that he has created. This underspending problem does many times come from a place of hoarding, and we celebrate restriction and self-denial. And 
to some degree, I get that. There are lines that we need to draw that say this far, no further. We talk about that at Good Sense all the time, this idea of a lifestyle cap to say this far, no further. That is a very good, healthy practice to put boundaries and limits on ourselves. But that boundary and limit should involve enjoyment and delight and hobbies that we really uh, find restful and beautiful. Things that involve spending money don't mean they're automatically bad. We want to engage in the things that we're passionate about. The other symptom of underspending a lot of times is a lack of generosity. When we have restricted and, and been so focused on spending as little as possible on ourselves, it becomes harder and harder to access generosity because restriction is our highest priority. And generosity is coming from a sense of overflow and abundance. And that is the opposite of the goal of underspending. The goal of underspending is to operate from a place of scarcity, to limit ourselves to the bare minimum. That does not lead to a generous heart. And so underspending generally is this combination of hoarding and lack of generosity that leads to a reinforced sense of ownership rather than stewardship. It's my money. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hoard it. I'm going to protect myself and feel safe. And I'm denying myself. And as a result, then I have no opportunity to abundantly share with others because I am so focused on restricting everything that feels generous to myself. And so it's hard to be generous to others as well. One of the clearest directives and also one of my favorite uh, conversations about money in scripture is when Paul is talking to Timothy and he tells them to instruct the rich in this present age to not find their security in their resources, to not focus on money as being a source of security and confidence, but instead recognize God as the owner and that he gives us all of this to richly enjoy. And then the thing that I love is that he says in 18 that we are to be rich in good deeds, that we are to be generous and ready to share. And I actually think that is part of the enjoyment, that God has given us these incredible resources to manage on his behalf and that in the sharing of those resources, and those are our time, our skills, our talents, also our financial resources for sure, in sharing that with others, that is the delight, that is the enjoyment, and it ends that section of scripture, Paul says, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. And I think underspending as much as we think of it as being successful in the experience of taking hold of that, which is truly life, I actually think it leads to failure. It's why I don't like the idea of a budget. It's why we at Good Sense don't talk about uh, spending as budgeting. We talk about a spending plan. And I know that feels like it's the same thing, but it's wildly different. A spending plan has the intention of spending. We will spend on these things. The antidote to underspending is planning to spend. The goal of someone who's wired to underspend is to spend as little as possible and celebrate the fact that they spent very little. The budget, the concept of a budget more often than not is let's just don't do anything. Let's not enjoy. Let's never eat out. Let's never have any fun. And then when we get to the end of the month and we have saved a few hundred dollars by not doing anything we enjoy, we'll high five and celebrate over that. That is not something to celebrate. What we want to be celebrating is that we walked into this month with an intention. We walked in this into this month with a clear-headed vision of where we're going to be spending because we know we will be spending. And we decided ahead of time how we would apply God's resources to the life we want to lead. Then when we get to the end of the month, if we did not do what we intended, if we didn't spend as much as we said we would in certain categories, we're not high-fiving over that. That means we actually miss the target. We don't want to celebrate 
restriction beyond what we said we were going to do. We want to do what we said we were going to do. And that's why a spending plan, even just in the name, is so much more helpful than this idea of restriction and and denying to the point of a focus on underspending. Now, I, I want to make very clear here, if you have been struggling with underspending, the antidote to underspending is not to go on a shopping spree. And a lot of times that's actually what I see is that people will restrict and restrict and restrict almost like they're on a yo-yo diet. They'll force themselves to underspend for a season and then they'll feel entitled to go and spend recklessly. They'll feel like they deserve it. They've earned it. And so then they will go and waste God's resources with a lot of unintentional, thoughtless, emotional spending rather than stepping in to intentional spending and doing what they said they would do. And so we don't want to have the fix to underspending end up being just a season of overspending because that ends up bouncing us back and forth. When we when we kind of fix the underspend by overspending, then our brain sees all that overspending and it responds by saying, cut it off, shut it down, go back to underspending, which we can do for a season. And then we go back to overspending and we just keep going back and forth. It's the same thing you see physically with diets. And so it's really important that we find a steady state, that we track our spending really well, that we understand where it's going, and that we decide ahead of time as a family what we are choosing and why, and then live that out thoughtfully and intentionally. Map it out. Be planning these things rather than being reactive to your emotion in the moment, because your emotion in the moment is either going to be one of self-denial and spending any money is uh, unnecessarily selfish, or you're going to end up in a situation where you're overspending because you kind of feel this sense of freedom and you're not paying attention. And both of those extremes are wrong. Both of those extremes put us in places that reinforce an ownership mindset rather than a stewardship mindset. Prayerfully consider the non-negotiables that you have for your family. What are the most important things that you want to be saying yes to? Prioritize those things. They need to be put into the spending plan first in order to prevent underspending. If, for example, you say, we're going to spend at least $100 a month on fun for the family, do it. Because fun with your family is something you're choosing. And if you build it out in your spending plan, then when you do engage in those things, you can do it fearlessly, confidently. You're not second guessing yourself or feeling any sense of selfishness because you've mapped all of it out and you have decided this is what you're going to do. And you know you can. You know that it's affordable. You know that you have enough resources. You know that God uh, has designed you to engage in relationship and connection and fun and delight. And yet you've put that in a place where it fits within your overall plan. That is when you really get to a place of freedom. You get the joy of engaging in things that bring you delight and fun and pleasure that doesn't come along with a, a sense of guilt and shame because you're spending money that you don't have or you're feeling like you're indulging when you shouldn't be spending any money at all. Those are the things our brain tries to trick us with. And what God has always been pointing to for the rich in this present age is to be generous with our works, with our, our deeds, with our kindness and our thoughtfulness and our generosity towards others, and to be willing and ready to share so that we can take hold of that which is truly life for us and for our family. This is the God that we serve. This is the life that he calls us to, a life that is full. We don't want to miss it because we're so focused on over hoarding and underspending that we deny ourselves the beauty and the richness of the full life that God has called us to. Mm -hmm. 
thank you so much for listening to the Faithful Steward podcast. Be sure to check out the show notes for links and other information that we mentioned in today's episode. Also, be sure to check out our website at goodsensemovement.org to get all the resources we offer churches to help equip them in teaching financial stewardship to their community. If you have any questions or any topics you want to make sure we cover on our show, you can email me at jameslenhoff at goodsensemovement.org. I'd love to hear from you. I hope you all have a great week. We'll talk to you next week.